Hi everyone, welcome back to Skywatch Weekly. Hope you had a great week. Hopefully you had a chance to go outside and see some of the sights in the sky. In fact, tonight, May 6th, here in Chicago, looks to be a pretty clear view. So hopefully you have a chance to see some of the things that we'll talk about this week. Let's dive right in. Uh, you can see the moon there already in our view, and we'll get to that in a little bit. I want to start off, though, facing west. Quick recap of those uh, late winter constellations and the planet Venus that will be uh, disappearing soon. So catch them while you can. You've still got a beautiful view of the Gemini twins, Pollux and Castor, the heads of those twins, the bright planet Venus as well, still very much uh, the most obvious thing in this western sky. And we've also got the star Capella, and uh, we're going to be talking about that as well in reference to the northern sky, which is the part of the sky that I want to focus on this week. Well, we talk about wintertime stars here beginning to disappear. The planet Venus as well, not always visible in this evening sky. This week I want to talk about a part of the sky that's a little bit more reliable, you might say. It doesn't change all that much throughout the year. You'll always be able to find the same things visible in this part of the sky. This northern sky, circumpolar stars, that's compared to seasonal stars like we've been talking about so far. Well, I want to zoom out once again here. We're going to be capturing a larger part of the sky. So we'll zoom out slightly. You can see kind of our terrain uh, down at the bottom and one of the corners of the view here. Don't worry too much about uh, that. We're really focusing on the sky. Whatever your terrain might look like, whatever horizon view you might have. That's what you can imagine there. But in this northern part of the sky, I want to begin with probably the best known pattern of stars to look for in the sky, the Big Dipper. Now that's going to be high up overhead as we've seen in previous weeks. High up overhead and we're going to use it to find a couple of other things. We already used that handle, that arc shape to arc to Arcturus and then speed down to Spica. This time we're going to use the two pointer stars at the end of the bowl of the Big Dipper. So we're going to use those. They point to Polaris, the pole star, also known as the North Star. So by drawing that line from those two, in this case, down in the sky, not always the case, as we'll see, it's going to point roughly to Polaris. Now, Polaris, the North Star, not the brightest star in the sky. That's a common misconception. It's just barely in the top 50 brightest stars, but bright enough to be seen even from Chicago. So if you get out there, especially when you know where to look based on where the Big Dipper is and where it's pointing with those pointer stars, you can find the North Star. Now the North Star is part of a, another grouping of stars called the Little Dipper. So we have the Big Dipper up overhead tonight and the Little Dipper about halfway up in the sky. It might surprise you to learn both of these patterns, well known perhaps, easily seen, especially in darker skies, but not constellations. We have 88 official constellations, and the Big and Little Dippers aren't on that list. They are what we call asterisms. That's a bright pattern of stars that's going to kind of catch your eye, especially in Chicago, the Big Dipper, a very good asterism to look for. But it's part of a larger constellation called Ursa Major, the Great Bear. So it's kind of the body and the tail of that larger and much dimmer constellation. From darker skies, you might be able to trace out the head and the body and the legs of that bear, but from Chicago you might be stuck with those seven stars in the Big Dipper. Something similar going on with the Little Dipper, part of the Little Bear, Long Tails. Uh, the Greeks have a myth to uh, cover that oddity in the sky here. We're going to focus on that North Star and what it means in this northern sky. It may not be the brightest or the closest star, but what's significant about it? Well, it just happens to be where the North Pole of the Earth points. North Pole doesn't point directly at it, but it's close enough that as the Earth spins throughout the day and throughout the night, you're going to find stars rising and setting, but the North Star is going to do something pretty special. Let's show this motion here. We're going to go through the night, so we're seeing hours go by here. Notice the North Star is staying in essentially the same spot there. The Big Dipper getting much lower in the sky here. In fact, now we're in the daytime sky. We've taken away the Earth's atmosphere here so we can continue to see the stars. And we see and something interesting here. In this northern part of the sky, the North Star not appearing to move and the stars around it not setting. It's a pretty special part of the sky. You'll be able to count on it being the same 
every night of the year, at least as far as which stars are visible. The Big Dipper tonight, essentially straight up overhead. Six months from now, if you're looking in September or October after sunset, the Big Dipper will be very low in the sky. A little bit harder to see, but still above the horizon. Here in Chicago, it's circumpolar. It never sets below the horizon, and that's essentially true for mid-northern latitudes around the entire world. Well, we use those pointer stars to point to the North Star. If you continue that line through the North Star and down towards the horizon, you're going to be close to another asterism to look for. This one is low tonight, after sunset. This zigzag shape, a W shape perhaps, is Cassiopeia the Queen. So Cassiopeia the Queen of ancient Ethiopia. Now those five stars in the W, they are visible from Chicago, but this is going to be our weekly challenge this week to actually see Cassiopeia in the sky. You'll need a clear northern horizon, and you want to use that trick of the Big Dipper, pointing those pointer stars down to the North Star and then continuing through to Cassiopeia. So Cassiopeia, once again, low tonight, but in six months, September or October after sunset, you're going to find Cassiopeia nice and high up there in the sky after the sun goes down. So these circumpolar stars, reliable. They're always in the sky here in Chicago and they're going to be visible every clear night of the year. Now notice there are a couple of bright stars near that circle in the sky. This is the circumpolar sky from Chicago's latitude. If you were to go a little bit further north, maybe up into, say, northern Wisconsin, you'd find some other stars included in that circumpolar circle. That includes Capella, which we had already mentioned. It's just to the left here of the circle, a little bit towards the west. If you're driving up north, uh, maybe in the summertime, heading straight north, you might see a very bright star just on that northern horizon, essentially rising as you drive further and further north, and that would be Capella. I've seen that several times myself. Another bright star near this is Deneb. That's part of the constellation of Cygnus, the swan. That's a classic summertime constellation. In future weeks, we'll be focusing on that and its visibility in Chicago. But for now, pretty low. A couple hours after sunset tonight, we're looking at that uh, yeah, quite low down there in the north northeast. So this northern part of the sky, really encourage you to get out there and check it out. All sorts of things to see, even from Chicago. And once again, using that Big Dipper, pointing with those pointer stars down to the North Star and then through to Cassiopeia. I want to move now to our view of the moon tonight, a beautiful view of the moon in the southeast after sunset tonight. The full moon, and uh, by this point, a couple hours after sunset, well above that uh, eastern and southeastern horizon. The moon, uh, when it's full, is always going to be rising opposite the setting sun. Now, your calendar may say that tomorrow, May 7th, is the full moon. Full moon is technically tomorrow. It's actually tomorrow morning, uh, just around sunrise, in fact. The moon will be at its fullest phase. So either tonight or tomorrow night on the 7th, a great chance to see that full moon in the sky. If you look at it through binoculars or a small telescope, you won't see as much texture as you might have seen earlier in the week. Uh, that's because it's a full phase. It's essentially high noon on this part of the moon. So you're not going to see uh, all the texturing and shadowing that we saw earlier. But a great chance to see what you might see is the man on the moon, the woman in the moon, uh, perhaps the rabbit in the moon, other pictures that uh, you might happen to find up there as you gaze at our nearest celestial neighbor. So a beautiful view there, definitely encourage you, and I hope you had a chance over the past week or so to watch its phase and location change in the sky over the course of that week. So a lot to look for up there tonight, and I definitely hope you have a chance to get out there and get familiar with that northern sky. Don't forget to subscribe and follow the Adler Planetarium on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks so much. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you again soon.